Hi, my name is Krister Schaum, and currently I'm at the Institute for Quantum Computing in Waterloo. I'm a researcher there. I uh, did my PhD here in Toronto before moving there. And what do I do? Well, I spend my day playing with lasers and trying to use light to study various quantum effects. So the question for today is uh, quantum, what is it and uh, why should I care? Well, I think there's many reasons why we should care about quantum mechanics. Uh, there's many potential applications down the road. There could be a very good uh, financial benefit, you know, 40, 50, 80 years from now, a lot of our technologies, uh, quantum mechanics might play a very critical role in them and that could create new industries and things like that. But for me, personally, that's not so important to me. Um, because, you know, that, that's pretty far down the road and that would be great. The reason I care about quantum mechanics is because I feel like an explorer when I'm studying. Quantum mechanics, if, if you think about the world and what we know of the world right now, quantum mechanics is right there at the edge. Rob's talking about this revolution that's going on and in, 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 in how we perceive nature and the universe around us. And when I study quantum mechanics, I feel like I'm exploring that edge. I'm pushing up against it. You know, you feel like Christopher Columbus and you're about to discover a new land or Jacques Cousteau at the bottom of the ocean or maybe uh, an astronaut landing on the moon. Now, what I do in the lab isn't as maybe sexy as like landing on the moon, but it's, uh, it's nonetheless, you, you're, you're pushing the boundaries of, of what we understand. And I find that personally very exciting. It, it fulfills a very deep um, sense of curiosity within me. Now, quantum mechanics itself, as Rob has pointed out, is, is very strange. It, it doesn't follow what we would normally expect. Um, and just to illustrate the strangeness, Rob's already talked a little bit about this, but I'd like to plug into it a little bit deeper. I need a, a volunteer, someone just right around here. You, sir, would you be willing? Okay, sorry, my name is Krister, your name is? Matt. Matt, okay, Matt. So, um, I have a very technical task for you. I'm gonna throw this glove, and I'd like you to catch it. All right? All right, give him a round of hand, applause. That is awesome, thanks. You can throw it back. Yeah. I need that when I go home. Um, so the reason that Matt could catch that glove is because he saw where it was going. He could see the trajectory or the path that the glove was taking as it landed. Now, your brain does something very complicated and there's a lot of motion skills that go into it, but in order to process it, you had to know where the glove was and how fast it was going. If you didn't know that, like if you closed your eyes and you had no idea where it was, you, you wouldn't be able to catch it. So with anything that we see in our, our regular world, um, that we encounter in our everyday experiences, we, we can measure both where something is and how fast it's going. But in the quantum world, you can't do that because of this Heisenberg uncertainty principle. You can either, um, you know, if you measure really, really well how fast something's going, you have no idea where it is, and vice versa, if you measure really, really well uh, where something is, you, you have very little idea of how fast it's going. And this um, leads to a, a really bad physics joke. Uh, most physics jokes are bad, so, so bear with me on this one. But it goes as this, you know, Heisenberg, he is driving down the road, he's a physicist, and uh, the cops pull him over for speeding. And they say, cop walks up to him, knocks on the window, and uh, says, license and registration. And then he looks at Heisenberg and says, do you have any idea how fast you were going? And Heisenberg looks back at him and says, no, but I know where I am. So. Ah, oh, yeah. Bad joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, this is the uncertainty principle, and in quantum mechanics, we run into a lot of situations like this, where you have something like position or velocity, and you, you have this trade-off of you can either measure one really well or the other, or get some information of both, but not complete. And whenever this happens, we call these complementary variables or observables. And Niels Bohr, who is one of the founders of quantum mechanics and the Titans, he was fond of saying that there's something else that's complementary, that truth and clarity are complementary with one another. In other words, you can know, it, it, you can either explain something really well and very clearly, but it might not have a lot of truth behind it, or if you want to explain a deep truth, it might not come out so clear. And quantum mechanics is definitely like this, it's why it's so hard to explain, but if you really think about it, a lot of things in life are like this too. For example, if, if a Martian came to you and asked you, what is love, right? 
it would be really hard to articulate what love is. Now, we've, we've experienced love. We, we have an inkling of what it is. So you might say, well, go to the, the bookstore and you know, read about love, and they go there and maybe they find something from Dr. Phil or many of the thousands of titles about you know, dating or whatever else it is. Or they can go to the library and read thousands upon thousands of pages of people's academic dissertations about love, but they still don't really get to the heart of what love is. And I think the solution is um, the poet. A poet has a way of using words, but transcending the words to take you very deeply into where, to, to the feeling or the emotion of what love is. So I, I just want to uh, recite a little poem by Margaret Atwood. I'm not very good at memorizing things, so I'm thankful it's a short poem. And it, it goes like this. It says, you fit into me like a hook into an eye, a fish hook, a bare eye. Now, this poem is, I find it very disturbing in many ways. And it, it gets to the heart of, of love, I think, at least this dual aspect of it. Because, you know, it talks about the joy of, like, you know, you fit with someone, and that, that's really nice. But, you know, it also gets to the pain of, of it, and it, it conveys that very accurately. Now, love really isn't literally like taking a fish hook and stabbing someone in the eye with it. At least, I, I hope no one here has experienced stuff like that. So, um, but it's not really about what it's literally saying. It's about where it takes you and, and taking you into that emotion. And so I've often wondered, is there a way to get around this idea of, you know, how do you explain quantum mechanics? Because when we try to explain these concepts in physics, we often try to go for truth. So we try to make it as truthful and accurate as possible, and then it gets really convoluted. And it, we, I feel like we're sometimes academics, um, you know, trying to be as accurate as possible and hedging our bets. And maybe a better way to explain quantum mechanics is to take the poet approach, to try and you know, maybe, maybe we're not literally being truthful, like, you know, we, we use things like sticking needles in people's eyes to explain love. We could do something maybe equivalent with quantum mechanics or with physics. Um, and, and maybe we can do that to get to the essence of some of these quantum weirdness and some of these strange things. So, um, how do you become a poet and do this? I don't know, I'm not a poet. And it's just something that I've been thinking about a lot, and so I've, I have started working, um, with a, a fantastic magician uh, named Dan Trometer, um, who I don't think he can make it here, but he's, uh, to me, a lot of these things in, in quantum mechanics, they seem magical. And so, you know, why not get a magician to help illustrate some of these concepts? And you know, it's not 100% what's going on, and it's not accurate, um, um, but it, it gets to the idea of, of really some of the strangeness. And so, this is something I've been thinking about is you know, how to use poetry, in a sense, to explain quantum mechanics, to, to get convey the essence. You're, you're not going to get the full picture, but you're going to get maybe some of these shadows of the picture. So, uh, yeah, that's all I'd like to say. Thank you very much.